Hi, my name is Asa and I'm interviewing an amazing woman with an amazing history, Cynthia Miller, which you're going to find out about in a minute. Cynthia, your father had to do with nuclear power, nuclear bomb, <laughs> nuclear something? Yes, yes. My father was one of the engineers that built the first bomb. And then, an engineer that built the first nuclear bomb. Right, he built the first um, nuclear power plant to create plutonium and uranium, weapons grade plutonium and uranium. He um, worked with Oppenheimer in private classes at UCLA to learn how to create bombs. And then he was the head of the South Pacific Proving Grounds in Ainuita, where a lot of the um, bombs were detonated. And then he would go to Nevada for all the bombs that were detonated there. So in all, he watched 131 explosions. These were atom bombs, and he built the first hydrogen bomb also. Well, that's a story. <laughs> 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 That's a story. <laughs> and you were um, this big? Well, I was conceived as he was building the first plutonium plant. So I was conceived with radioactive plutonium. And I was sick my whole life. And it was not until I was in my 50s that I was finally diagnosed with radiation poisoning. Wow. And then through my childhood, my dad would watch all these bombs explode and then he'd bring home that traumatic energy to our family. You were conceived in radiation, basically, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, yeah. And, and when I was growing up, I was always sick. I had a headache for 26 years straight. Wow. But I didn't know people didn't have headaches. In our family, everything was top secret, so you never talked about anything. And so I just assumed no one talked about having a headache. And then um, the doctors were treating me, and then one day I didn't have a headache. And I was stunned. So to everybody I knew and said, do you have a headache? I was shocked to hear that other people didn't live in total pain. Wow. Wow. I remember my first headache. <laughs> I do. I clearly remember I was like, I think 20 something years old. And I heard about headaches. But I'm like, how can you headache? You know, that's weird. And then I got a headache. I'm like, whoa, I've got a headache. I remember my first headache. It was really weird. So you grew up not having no pain. You grew up having a headache. So headache was normal for you. That's all I knew. That's all you knew. Headache. Whoa. And then the rest of my body always hurt too. But everybody in my family's body, we all hurt all the time. So I assumed everybody hurt because that was my reality. That's what I knew. And then um, you got treated when you were 20 something? Um, when I was. <coughs> why, why did you go to a doctor if pain was normal? Because um, I started realizing when I left home and grew up that everybody else didn't hurt like I did. So I started going to doctors, and the pain was so intense. Um, I just wanted to kill myself. It was just excruciating. So I went to all kinds wow. of doctors. And then I was diagnosed with hypoglycemia, and so I changed my diet. And then some of the pain left when I changed my diet. But I still had all these other kinds of pain. And doctors, you know, I'd tell them a little bit about my dad, and they'd say, oh, there's no way you could be experiencing anything from your father. <laughs> and then when I finally, when I was in my 50s, um, 
a really dear friend of mine, her brother was a doctor, and he, I was living in Seattle, and he came to Seattle for a special conference on dealing with radiation and how to clear radiation out of your body. And she wanted me to meet him, and I said, oh no, because I was really tired of talking to doctors. So she had me to dinner and had her brother to dinner, and then she left and said, okay, you two have to talk. <laughs> So he started asking me all these questions and kind of pulling information out of me. And so he said, you need to go get tested for plutonium and for radiation. And so I met a doctor who had been in the service during Chernobyl. Mm -hmm, and he had mm -hmm. gotten radiation poisoning in the service. And this process that he took me through, had, he had healed himself. So I felt confident that he knew what he was talking about. So then I was getting chelation, which was mm -hmm. a hundred shots. I would get shots all around my head and behind my eyes and my whole body would get shots. I'd get a hundred shots every week for one and a half years. And it was excruciatingly painful. And as the shots were pulling the radiation out of my body, I would wake up in the middle of the night and these colors would just be pulsating in my body and I'd get up and paint with my hands. Oh, really? And so I created this whole body of artwork painting with my hands as this radiation is coming out of my body. So, um, first of all, you know, the doctor saying that no, you didn't inherit anything from your father, that's number one craziness, of course you did, and then, um, you know, being in so much pain all your life, that's amazing, that's amazing, and chelation, talk a little bit so that people know what chelation is, because I think that's so important, chelation, it gets rid of so much toxic stuff in your body, doesn't it? And so many people are uh, suffering all of these poisons. You know, the cancer rate's going like this, isn't it? It's not like gradually. Everybody knows somebody who's directly or knows somebody who knows somebody who's got cancer. Oh, that's right? a whole other story. It's cancer. <coughs> yeah. Because um, no one's talking about how cancer is related to radiation. And none of the tests that people are doing is exploring that connection. So there are different ways of dealing with cancer, but it's not in the mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And we have to find something that's not in the mainstream, don't we? Yeah. Because the mainstream is killing a lot of people. <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah. Yeah, there's a doctor in Italy who's curing cancer with baking soda. Oh, I heard about yeah. baking soda, not about the doctor, but it yeah. neutralizes, right? Yeah. It, it alkalines, right. and cancer doesn't grow in alkaline. Right. So did you get cancer? Did no, I've done a lot of preventative alternative health care to release the cancer that was... Like chelation. Yeah, chelation was one of them, but I've done lots of other things and lots of herbal supplements and changing my diet and just being careful because I know I have a high propensity towards cancer. Um, so I've been aware of that and working on this for years. So you, these, these radio... Uh, radioactive poisons right. what do you call it Ra ra radiation. radiation radiation right. in your blood and the chelation is taking them out and you're painting pictures with it yeah well, it, actually, it actually goes into your bones it's where plutonium goes it goes into your bones it likes to be in your bones it goes to your sex cells but it goes all over yeah yeah so I get up in the night and paint pictures just oh my because God. the energy just was demanding to come out my body. So then after um, my mom died, then I inherited all these 
documents about mm-hmm. what my father had been doing. What did your mother die of? Can I ask you? Um, she had Alzheimer's and dementia, oh, okay. and she had had cancer too. And your father? He died of massive bone cancer, leukemia. And everybody who had positions similar to his died of bone cancer. Wow. Yeah. So after I inherited these certificates, then maybe five years later, um, the bombs that my father watched explode were um, declassified, and you could find them on the Internet. Mm Mm-hmm. So I googled all the bombs that my dad was related to, or he had his hand in, and then I looked at all those photos, and I compared those photos to my art, and they were exactly the same. Wow, my yeah, God. Yeah, it was pretty shocking. Yeah. It was very shocking. And then I was still in massive pain, even after the chelation. That took some of it out, but there was still a lot of pain in my body. I'd had this electroshock in the back of my neck. It was kind of like this zapping, kind of like a cattle prod or something, that was shooting in my neck for 60 years. Wow. Constantly. Wow. And um, at one point I lost everything. All my things were in storage and they got stolen and I lost all my investments in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why on earth am I still alive? I'm in such pain. So once again I was contemplating suicide. And this energy came up inside me and said, choose gratitude. And I thought, well, I have absolutely nothing to lose. We'll just give this a try. So I would lay on the couch and I would bring gratitude and I'd spin it through all my cells, especially in the back of my neck. That's where I was focusing at that time. And then the gratitude would shift. And I can see inside cells and Mm -hmm. other people in my own body. And so I could see how the gratitude was working. So I would take little notes and watch it. And then every once in a while I'd get off the couch and I'd walk down the street to my neighbors and I would take pictures. And the photos I took, when I got home, you know, I'd put them up on my computer and I'd go, oh my goodness, that's how it looks. That's what the gratitude looks like. Spinning. So I, over time I put all these things together and created my first book, which is called The Art of Radical Gratitude. The Art of Radical Gratitude. Yes. Yeah. By Cynthia Miller. So, um, over time, this electroshock in my neck completely healed, completely transformed. Wow, through through gratitude. gratitude. So, gratitude is actually changes the vibration of your cells. It does. It does. And I have a PhD in cellular transformation. That's my work. So I've been working and seeing inside hundreds, thousands of people's bodies over the past 30 years. And so this is like a whole other leap to the work I was doing. So I started doing this with all my clients. And so people start having tremendous results just working with gratitude. And I kept thanking all the horrible stuff inside, Mm -hmm. all the fear Mm -hmm. and the rage and mm-hmm. all of that. And as I did, all these other things in my body started healing. Things I wasn't even focusing on started getting better. You know, what about like Alexander Lowen? Um, he he did bioenergetics. Mm-hmm. He's the one that, that created bioenergetics. And he was a student of Wilhelm Reich. And he believes uh, through his work, you know, and I don't know if he's dead or not, but he'd be well in his 90s, that you've got to emotionally purge the pain in your body. Focused on the root cause, you know, emotionally purge, like, you know, get all of the pain out of your body through emotional release work. Mm-hmm. And, you're, you know, if you let go, your body's 
<laughs> starts, you know, doing its thing and releasing, releasing. And then once you've released so much pain in your body, then a, then a higher consciousness in yourself can, can start um, being present. Right, right. Yes, so what I see is as you thank all the pain and thank the horrors, and it's kind of like the last thing on earth you ever want to do is thank it. But as you thank it, it starts to melt in this field of gratitude, because gratitude is a very high frequency. Very high. Very yeah, high. I, I do my gratitude list, you know, the three right. pages right. every day. Right. And so this high frequency Interesting. gratitude starts to shift the cellular structure of your body. Mm. Because Alexander Lowen is a man, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that as a, as a woman, you would be doing it in a different way. You get to the same point of gratitude, but one's through external and you're doing it internal. It's all internal. As a woman. It's all internal. And you keep going in deeper. And you'll find there might be these horrible gremlins or just nasty stuff you yeah. don't even want to look at. Yeah. And you thank that. Yeah. And as you thank it, what happens is it's like going down this dark tunnel or even going down a birth canal. Yeah. And at some point you burst through uh -huh. into a whole other level of consciousness. So, so gratitude, thanking, going into that... Yeah. that pit of hell yes. actually dissolves the force of it yes. by, by thanking it, yes. by gratitude. Yes. And then afterwards, because you've got to get your soul, what's my soul's learning in this hell that I'm in? You know, the, I mean, that to me is really, really important, you know? So what happens then is you burst through into this whole new reality. Mm -hmm. And I also see that it's almost like all the toxins were creating space in your body. And as you thank all the toxins for all the space they took in your body, they clean out, and then there's this amazing space for your spirit or your soul or your essence to shine into the world through your body. So the next piece of my work Interesting. Uh, yeah. you, you know, there's, uh, I don't know if it was Carl Jung or some, some great person said that, that um, every demon in hell is a potential angel. Totally. Completely. Yeah. That's what I've found. And it's like wow. each one of those is a gift. Right. They're right. all a gift, all those demons. And when you really look at it and really see what it is, then the gift is revealed. And so it's a lot about, some people want to stop short. They don't go all the way through to the gift. <coughs> and then the other piece is this amazing being that we really are. We are these expanded, incredible beings of light. And part of what I see is biologically the way our brains function as a tiny child what we do is we take on our environment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that gets programmed in our nervous system mm -hmm. that's how it works mm -hmm. but at this moment in history we can shift that mm -hmm. and we can release all that and we can choose to take on the blueprint of our spirit or our soul why in, in this moment of the history I have no idea why, but it's just here. How do you know it's this moment of history? Well, I see it in people. I see it in all my clients. When I, it wasn't even here 30 years ago. So that you can see a big difference working with people now compared Completely. to Completely. 10 years ago. Yeah, it's a huge difference. And externally... So do I, by the way. Good. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing it is. what people achieved... In a year, yes. ten years ago, right. boom, a weekend exactly. almost. I know. Incredible. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And the whole external world is getting more and more chaotic. There's more and more dysfunction. 
So it's like we're just on the cusp of breaking through into this new world. And it can be either worse or we can choose to make it this amazing new world that we're going to break into. And we have the choice right now to choose how we want to do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people are waking up all over. All over. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I used to be very radical. Now I'm not anymore. I know. <laughs> And the people on my committee didn't really know what I was talking about 30 years ago. And now, it's like everybody gets it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's amazing. It is. It is. It is. You know what I'm thinking? Well, what I'm seeing through the work that I do Mm -hmm. is we're coming out of independence, me, I, you know, myself, or dependence, you know, <laughs> needing, right. and we're coming into a co-creative interdependence yeah. where I'm I'm whole in myself, you're whole in yourself. You don't need me, I don't need you, but together, you right. and I, out of want, not out of need, out of vision, right. you know, we can create so, something so much more powerful. And I think this this uh, ego independent I'm a hero thing, you know, is has had its day. Yes, it doesn't totally. work anymore. It doesn't work. It doesn't. it doesn't work. And I see what you're talking 